Hey guys, it's Morgan from Racer X Performance Tuning, and uh, we've been working recently with a client who's got a 3000 GT Stealth running on a Haltech Elite 2500 box, and we're at a point where we're working on boost tuning, and I'm kind of getting into the stage boost tuning and thought I would share with you a little bit about how stage boost tuning works in Haltech NSP. So we had already done the work in open loop uh, duty cycle to determine that we needed about 60% wastegate duty cycle to get us to our target, which the client wanted to target 20 PSI boost. So taking that work from the open loop, and now we can go over and change our configuration. So we're going to start using closed loop. And closed loop is going to allow the ECU to help manage uh, so that we don't go either too high or too low uh, below our boost target. So one of the things I love about Haltech is that it's got a very sophisticated boost management system that kind of goes through a set of states that will determine what needs to happen based on where you're at in your boost cycle. So those states kind of help the ECU to manage that. So uh, let's take a look at it as we're looking through one of these data logs here where we kind of start right here. We're going to look down at the bottom. You can see you just got three lines in the, in the chart or in the graph here. So you got RPM on the red line, you've got the boost pressure on the green line and the blue line is the throttle position. So we know right here, you just had the wide open throttle and this is where we're doing our run to kind of get an idea about how our boost tuning was working. So if you look here, we have our target is gonna be uh, 20 PSI. We're just doing boost by vehicle speed right now. So we just said, let's go with 20 PSI and we'll get all that dialed in and later we can decide if we wanna do something different, boost by gear or RPM or otherwise, but this is a great place to start. Over here in our uh, closed loop based duty cycle table. If we're targeting 20 PSI, we knew that we needed 60% wastegate duty cycle to get us there. So it's a great starting point and we'll see where things go from there. So what's going to happen is a few things. We're going to start off at a boost control state called off boost. So as long as we're below, you know, zero PSI and we're not anywhere, just basically running in vacuum, there's not going to be any boost control going on whatsoever. It's not going to try to do anything. Uh, to spool the turbos. Once we start to reach, let's see if I can just scroll over here just a little bit. Yeah, once we reach just a little bit or right at zero or anything over zero PSI or essentially lost the vacuum and now we're on the boost side of things, we're going to move into a stage called spooling. And spooling is simply going to just look up what we've got programmed in the uh, target pressure uh, uh, table for wastegate duty cycle. And it's going to run that amount of duty cycle. See our boost control output duty cycle right here at 60 uh, percent wastegate duty cycle. Now this client's uh, turbo spools up very quickly, but if you had kind of a laggy turbo, maybe a very large turbo and you weren't able to get it kind of up to speed uh, as quickly as you'd like, you have an option here called enable spool assist. If you turn that on, it's going to actually run a hundred percent duty cycle until you've reached out, until you've gotten outside of the spooling stage. We'll talk about what that is next, but that's an option you have if you've got a turbo that's just not spooling up very quickly. Uh, this one spools quickly, so we didn't need to use that. In fact, when we did use it, we kind of started over boosting, so we just took that right back out. Um, but here we go. So we moved from spooling, and it's going to run that 60% duty cycle, and right now it's going to keep running that until we reach a certain point. So let's talk about what that point is, right? As we kind of keep spooling here, you can see we're up to 7.9 PSI, and then we hit a section called delay time. So let's look at why we went from from spooling to delay time and what delay time is. Uh, first thing, we're gonna look at two things that will determine when we're gonna change gears, so to speak, from this spooling, which is sort of an open loop duty cycle, just give me that 60% or whatever you programmed in table and don't do anything about it. Just keep giving me that until I got to a certain point. And that point is called the control point offset. So here you can program in whatever you want, but basically we're saying, once I'm within 7.3 PSI of my target, which is 20 uh, um, PSI, then I can start to move into closed loop. So how does that work? So here we can see we reach, reach delay time because 
our manifold pressures at 12.8 psi. 12.8 psi plus the 7.3 of the boost target offset is going to get us to at least 20 psi of our target. So it knows we are within 7.3 psi of our target. So now we're going to go into a state called delay time. And what's delay time is going to do is it's a chance for the turbo to kind of settle down, right? Maybe we've been in, in, in that spool assist, we're running a 100% duty cycle or whatever, but as you can see, we're ramping up. Boost is creeping up very quickly, very rapidly on a trajectory up to where we want it to be. If we immediately jumped in and started doing closed loop stuff using our, our proportional, our integral, and maybe even some derivative, well, it's going to start oscillating. It's going to be too soon to do that because this, the turbo hasn't settled down. So we're going to use this thing called delay time. And you have actually a controller uh, start delay, which is a table that you can set up how you like. This one happens, we happen to set it up by RPM. And so we're going to say, you know, if we've reached, you know, uh, within our control point offset of our target and we're at 2,000 or 3,000, even 4,000 RPM, we're going to wait about two seconds, which is probably too long. We'll talk about that in a minute, but we're going to wait about two seconds before we actually start to use the PID to control things. If we're already at 5,000 RPM, we're going to wait a half a second. If we're at 6,000, you know, we're probably already in boost. It's probably not even going to happen. We're going to wait a quarter of a second. Um, but that's the point there is that you've got this control point offset, which is going to decide at what point will we start to engage closed loop type of work. And we've got a start delay, which is to say once we've reached that point, how long are we going to wait for the, for the turbo to settle down before we start to do the closed loop work? Now, once we're in closed loop, the proportional, integral, and derivative portions of our programming here in ECU are going to take over to kind of help to maintain us within our target pressure. So we can see right now we were at 21.1 PSI and closed loop just began. We can see our boost error is exactly about that, 1.2 PSI above our boost target, which was 20 PSI. And so we're going to start to do a little bit of, a little bit of massaging of the boost control output. It's already started bringing it down, saying... Already, I'm going to start dropping this down to 59.7 uh, PSI, I'm sorry, a wastegate duty cycle to try to bring us in more in line with what that's going to be. So, you know, you would have set up your proportional a table similar to this. Proportional is like the main immediate correction is going to happen. Um, integral is a little bit more of a long term uh, um, sort of correction. And then derivative, we're usually not going to need too much of that or any of it at all. And that's essentially to kind of help to maintain us. Um, from getting any oscillation within our closed loop. We have a max derivative, which we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Max derivative of 14.5 is kind of common. We'll monitor that down here. When we've exceeded that 14.5, it's going to take us out of closed loop so we don't get some crazy oscillation that's going to bounce us around on the dyno. Uh, but let's go back to it here. So coming back to our, our base duty cycle table, we've got that reference of 60, and we're going to continue to do this type of work across the rest of the run. So now we're going to stay in closed loop and you can see that it's going to add, subtract a little bit. See now we're already back down to 20.6 or 20.4, 20.2, 20 20.3. 20 so pretty much within, you know, just fractions, just 20.1, there's 19.8. It's going to hang really, really close to our target, 19.9. So again, that's the beauty of having this PID come in here and uh, manage things for us as we're rolling through the rest of the run in this closed loop active state. So that's how staged closed loop uh, boost works in uh, Haltech NSP. And we can stop right there and theoretically, yes, we, we could be done. You can go ahead and use that type of knowledge to go ahead and you know work on your own uh, calibration. Um, however, we noticed a few things while we were doing this, right? So if you take a look back over here, right at this point here, a little bit of a peak of about 21.6 PSI. Now for our customer, he really, really wants to stay you know, below 20 PSI. He doesn't want to spike up here at all. And we can see that we spiked at a point when we were not yet actually controlling things, right? We had a delay time that we talked about earlier at two seconds of delay time. And that two seconds of delay time was enough for us to be continuing running at this duty cycle, ramping up here too rapidly, and kind of getting, you know, basically overshooting our target, okay? So what could we do about that was a question. What should we do about it? There's a number of ways that we can go about trying to bring this back down. We could go into the uh, control uh, target 
uh, waste case duty cycle table and say, let's lower these values, right? We can lower these values and then we'll have a lower maybe PSI or you know boost pressure coming into this and let closed loop bring it up afterwards. Let's take a look and see what happens when we did that. Now, taking a little bit of a different approach, let's go back and look at two tables that we referenced earlier in the video that can help us to manage this so that we're not overboosting and that we're not kind of laggy, right? And those two tables we already talked about. One is this control start delay, and the other one is the control point offset. Let us just start off with this control start delay. So when we were in delay time, we knew that we were waiting a good two seconds before a closed loop kind of came into play. And that was a time in the, in the first part where we saw that we were overboosting because we weren't doing anything about it yet. This delay time is going to be, it looks like, way too long, right? We're waiting three seconds at 2,000 and two seconds at four, three and 4,000. It's just too much time there. We don't want to go too short here because we do want this ability for the turbo to settle down before we start changing it. But let's say we put this at maybe just one second at 2,000. And then we'll just uh, interpolate this across here. And that's going to give us, you know, maybe one sec, a little bit less than a second at 3,000, just a tiny bit more than a half a second at 4,000. So bringing these values down should allow us to get out of delay and into closed loop much faster. The next thing we're going to change is this uh, control point offset. So right now we're waiting until we're about 7.3 PSI below that 20 PSI, so somewhere about 13 PSI or so before we start to kick in any of the closed loop work. And you know what? That's really maybe just too far away uh, to start doing that. So maybe we're just going to bring this down. Maybe we'll just set this at maybe a 5 PSI five by our target. So ramp up to about 15, and then we'll start to throw in the closed loop work. We're going to give this a shot and see what results we're going to get. Stay tuned. Take a look at part two of the video, and that should be coming out in the next day or so. And we'll see what the results of this was and if we need to change anything else. While you're in there, if you please don't mind, uh, please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. Like the videos when you can, and that'll help us make more videos like this. Hope you've enjoyed it, and we will see you guys soon.